So on August 21st, there is going to be a total solar eclipse visible in the United States. And if you're in the path of totality, you will be able to see the moon completely obscure the sun. It's rare and it is exciting. Uh, I've seen partial, a partial solar eclipse, and so I can only imagine how cool a total solar eclipse is going to be. So in preparation for that, I am actually making some filters for some of the camera gear that I'm going to be uh, taking with me. This is a fairly inexpensive spotting scope that I have a mount for my iPhone, so I can take some pictures and some video. And what the filter I have on here is actually one I made. Now, I need to be clear that this is a do-it-yourself filter only insofar as I made the the, the housing for, or the, the frame, for this silver film that you see on here. The silver film is a specialized film that I bought. It is designed specifically for this purpose. So that's very important. You can't just use any thing that you find laying around, especially if you're going to be using an optic like a, either a telescope or a spotting scope like this, where you have a significant amount of magnification. You don't want to be observing through something like this without the proper filter. If you're just going to be doing um, naked eye viewing, these cheap, uh, these are a dollar or less, and it's actually, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen convenience stores selling these now. So you still have time to get things like this. You still probably have time to get things like the filter. I'll put a link to it below, but I just want to say, uh, be careful. Don't uh, try to observe the eclipse with your naked eye. Now, during totality, if you are in a place where you're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to observe totality, that is the moon completely blocking the sun, during totality and only during totality, you can observe that with the naked eye. And in fact, on optics and things like that, you would actually take the filter off. This is completely, as far as I can tell, looking at this, uh, even looking at it out in the bright sun, unless I point it at the sun, uh, this is completely opaque. I can't, you can't really see through this. This is, a, again, specially designed film explicitly for this purpose, and they sell it in a roll so that you can make custom sizes for different optics. I've got the one for my spotting scope, I plan on, the one I'm gonna make in this video is the one for my DSLR, and I'll probably make one for my video camera as well, so that I just have a range of devices to record this, because it is something that is, it's rare, um, and it's exciting. So be safe, I'll put some links in below where you can get the film, where you can get the glasses, uh, and some other information, and also a link that shows the path uh, of the eclipse, and how much of it you may, you'll be able to see from your location. So the first thing I did was I measured the diameter of the lens hood on my DSLR. I used that to set the radius on the compass and drew the inner diameter on the filter frame. I eyeballed a few inches out from that and set the compass to get the outer diameter of the frame. I used dollar store file folders for the filter frame because a package of them was actually cheaper than the same weight of poster board from the craft store. Also, since the two halves of the folder are attached, it makes cutting them at the same time easier so you can get the two halves of the filter frame to match up. I cut the outer diameter first, and I tried to keep the two halves of the frame together. This isn't that important for the outer diameter, but when you're cutting the inner diameter, uh, it's good to have them the same size. And after cutting the frame out, I separated the two halves and put double-sided tape on one face of each ring. It's important not to get fingerprints on the film. So during handling, I wore non-powdered uh, latex gloves, and I also used a piece of poster board taped to the bench to create a sort of clean space where I could work with the film. The manufacturer of the film recommends cutting it between two sheets of stiff paper. I just used another file folder and sandwiched the film inside the folder and then cut the film a bit bigger than the rings. Okay, this part is important. And it's counterintuitive, so I'm going to place a lot of emphasis on it. I taped the film down, but I was very careful not to put it under tension. It's very important that the film not be stretched. It's okay if there are wrinkles in the final filter. The manufacturer actually says they are preferred. So I taped it down to keep it from moving, 
but it is not under tension. I then took the first ring with the double-sided tape exposed and dropped it down onto the film. The manufacturer recommends dropping it this way to, again, keep from placing the film under tension. On this first ring, you can see that the tape caught the glove and caused the ring to miss the film a little, but it's where it needs to be, so it doesn't matter. I then lightly pressed the ring down so the tape would make contact with the film and then flipped the ring over. I aligned the two rings as best as possible and then again, being careful not to stretch the film, put the second ring in place. After cutting away the excess film, I made a cylinder to go around the lens hood. This needs to fit snugly but be loose enough so it can be slipped on and off. I then used tiny amounts of hot glue to attach the cylinder to the filter ring. After testing the filter, I decided to put some black tape around the cylinder ring joint to prevent light from leaking in. Since the lens hood is bigger than the main lens body, the filter is sized such that it can be on but not interfere with the operation of the camera. I can still zoom in and out and use the focus ring. This is a video of the sun I shot with my camcorder with one of these solar filters in place. And this picture was taken with the iPhone spotting scope combination and one of the solar filters. Finally, this shot was taken with the DSLR. The filter produces a white light image of the sun. And on the previous two images, I didn't do any color correction or anything like that. But on this one, I actually adjusted it so the sun would uh, appear its typical orange. And that's basically it. It's really easy to make a solar filter using this film, and it's way less expensive than a glass-based uh, solar filter. Obviously, this isn't uh, a permanent type solution, but for an event like this solar eclipse, it works perfectly. Remember to use the filter at all times when viewing the sun. If you are in a place that's gonna experience totality though, you will wanna take the filter off of your camera um, during totality so you can capture images of uh, totality properly.